On February 25th, 1927, during the criminal heyday of Prohibition, Mickey Duffy touted as the boss of beer vice an extortion from New Jersey to eastern Pennsylvania. He was leaving his nightclub in Philadelphia with his wife Edith and his bodyguard. Suddenly, a large sedan sped by and a gunman inside unleashed a burst from a Thompson machine gun towards Duffy, wounding him five times. His bodyguard died on the spot, a doorman was seriously injured, and Duffy's wife entered their car before the full aside. In critical condition at a hospital, Duffy somehow survived. However, he only had four years to live when other gangland shooters would win out. By then, Gobble had been living in a lap of luxury and was bootlegging sales in top flight hotel suites and an expensive modernist home in the Tony Blue Blood Philadelphia suburb of the Overbrook. The Philadelphia Inquirer stated that before Duffy's violent death in 1931, he held South Jersey's beer and other rackets in the palm of his hand. He was the son of an immigrant from Poland and his real name was Michael J. Kuzik, but he chose an artist pseudonym and spoke and read fluent Polish. He came up the hard way as a violent criminal with 28 arrests going back to 1908, including suspicion of robbery, assault and battery. In a county jail in New York with petty larceny in 1916, he escaped until his capture in Philadelphia a year later. In 1919, a judge sentenced him to three years in Pennsylvania State for aggravated assault and battery with intention to kill, carrying a concealed weapon and assault with intent to steal. Out of prison in 1922, Duffy struggled again, not learning from his past. He promptly got himself arrested for another alleged robbery and assault and battery, but got off. In 1924, he racked up still more arrests, alleged possession of illegal liquor, a jewelry robbery, and assaulting a police officer. Duffy beat his way into the policy number racket until he lost his money and turned into bootlegging beer again. He acquired illicit breweries in his Camden and Egg Harbor, sold his suds in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. That year, he opened his own cabaret and dance cafe, the Club Cadix, in a chic part of downtown Philly. As of 1925, police did not arrest him, likely a result of his cash payoff. A grand jury in Philadelphia in 1928 described Duffy as the king of Rachetville, but it did not change him either. Wealthy and arrogant, Duffy and partner Harry Mercer embarked on an extortion racket, targeting drivers from trucks delivering illegal liquor. Meanwhile, Duffy and Edith moved to their 65,000 Banishville style home, with some of his pals claimed he bought with 65 $1,000 bills, $50,000 more on luxury furnishing. The Duffy's vacationed in Florida I lived for weeks on end in suites of extensive hotels, such as the Philadelphia's Ritz Carlton, at $1,000 a week, roughly estimating $18,000 in today's money. As of 1930, he was pulling in $10,000 a week and had $500,000 in the bank. He made sure to pay off his federal taxes. Still, Duffy felt insecure as an ex-con and tried to rehabilitate himself within a law abiding community. He donated to charities and their churches, but it didn't work. An orphanage denied the couple's request and adopted the child. On the last days of his life in summer 1931, Duffy told police of seeing strangers hanging around his property. He checked into the Ambassador Hotel in Atlantic City, hired two heavily armed guards, and never left the hotel alone. On August 30, 1931, at the hotel, Duffy met with his lawyer and US Congressman Benjamin Golder to discuss his upcoming drug trafficking trial, 7 September 14th. That early afternoon, he allowed two men to have lunch with him in his fourth floor suite. Afterwards, he crawled into bed for a nap, but the men returned and quietly fired several shots into his head as he slept. They escaped unseen. Duffy's funeral and his extravagant home drew about 3,000 onlookers. He left Edith $400,000 in cash, plus $150,000 more in property. Who killed him remains a mystery until 1935, Following an inquiry by the Pennsylvania Bar Association into underworld corruption among lawyers and police, Philadelphia Police Detective James Ryan concluded that two of Duffy's trusted henchmen, Sammy Grossman and Al Scally, killed their boss to take over the beer racket. But soon Grossman and Scally became too cocky as beer overlords of a competing gang in New York, the 69th Street Mob. The 69 gang sent hitmen, killed both men a few months after Duffy's demise, and took over their beer business.